Hello everyone, Scott here from Perry Public Library. This is session one in a series called Online, Might as well be getting smarter while you're at it. As I grow older, I notice that those who are older than me are sometimes beginning to show signs of their age. And one of these signs is that their memory begins to go away. A little bit of memory loss. And even though I don't forget things uh, too much yet, I think it's a good uh, to work on those memory muscles to keep them in shape because I don't want to be forgetting things that I say and then begin repeating myself. And besides that, I also don't want to be forgetting things that I say and then begin repeating myself. So yes, that's a joke. But anyway, the National Library of Medicine has some things to say about memory and we'll see what they have to say here too. Memory activities can help improve not only memory, but also reasoning and language skills. In fact, memory games have been used in research studies to explore how memory works and how it relates to language and object knowledge. Reasoning and language are both used as intelligence measures, meaning that memory activities can continue to develop intelligence. Activities that involve memory include games such as jigsaw puzzles, crossword, concentration card games, Sudoku, unquote. All right, so that's a little of what the National uh, Library of Medicine has to say on the topic of memory. So I've discovered some other things that help, which are not out of the way for us, especially if we're using our digital devices and we happen to be online anyway. In these sessions that I'm going to walk us through some online memory help games so that we can make use of them as frequently as we want to. You don't need to have an account in any of these sites in order to use them, uh, what I'm about to show you here. And there are other sites that have a variety of memory activities too, but these are easy to get to, they're easy to use, and they're easy for me to understand. So I know that you'll get it too. The first one is about jigsaw puzzles. So I go to jigsawexplorer.com. I'm going to go to the internet here. I'm going to use Google Chrome and bring that up. And as this comes up, this bar up here is called a browser bar. And it's just like when you go shopping for clothes and someone says, can I help you? No, I'm just browsing. What you're doing here is you're browsing the internet. So I'm going to say I want to go to jigsawexplorer.com. That's the name of the site that we're going to go to. And as I type that in, notice there's these other options of Jigsaw Explorer that, that show up. And you can click on one of those, but usually I'll just hit my enter key. Enter, click. And by the way, uh, these days you don't generally have to put www.whatever in on when you're browsing for something on the Internet anymore because your devices know that you're on the World Wide Web, which is what WWW stands for. Now, here we are on the front page of Jigsaw Explorer. This is our home page, and I'm going to go down here at the bottom. There's advertising here, and to the far right is a little X. So I'm going to X that away, click, and it goes away. A lot of times on these free sites, they'll have advertising because they want you to look at some of that kind of stuff too, and that that's how they get their uh, that's how they get paid. And that's what makes it free to us. But on this front page, we have the featured puzzle here. We have the Friday mystery puzzle mystery. I don't know what makes it a mystery. It's just on Fridays. But then they have the daily jigsaw, and so they have a couple of illustrations, a couple of examples here, and below that, just different puzzles that you maybe could. Uh, I'm just hovering over these different puzzles that you, that you can use. But what I like up here I kind of like this uh, nighttime sort of scene looking one I'm just hovering on that again when I'm ready to pick one I'm just going to click on it so click and we'll see what happens here there it is takes us to the next page and this is the Aurora Borealis jigsaw puzzle and I can play this puzzle right now and it gives me a little bit of information about it it's been completed 340,654 times we're going to make that 55 right now so I'm going to click on play this puzzle and what it does is it brings up a background and all these puzzle pieces just like that first thing that I want to do is get rid of this advertising down here click and it goes away but up here on the top see that little square I click on that and it gives me full screen mode so it kind of gets rid of everything except for what I, the, the screen that I need. So here we are with this rectangle right in the middle and you have these little dots on the left hand side of the rectangle and what that does is allows you as I click on that to put as many pieces in this as I want. You know here's what 1056 pieces looks like. That is a doggone lot of pieces or I can make it eight which would be really done really fast. I'm going to make it uh, let's say 18, 18 pieces. 
and we'll, we'll do it this way. Now the circle here, the pieces are all laid out so that the, the corner pieces and the bottom pieces are all laid out the way they should be. But if I hit this circle, it's kind of like when you just dump it out of the box and they're all different angles. It rotates them around so that they are all at different angles. So I'm going to leave it that way for the moment. And then this color palette here, as I click on that, that gives me a background color option. So I can make it gray or blue or black or whatever I like. I kind of like this brown color, so I'm going to leave that there. This little triangle here, well, if I click on that, will make it go, go away, or I can just click anywhere in space and it'll, it'll go away as well. Here's two people, and when I click on that, I, I, it says invite other players, invite other people to play this puzzle with you over the internet by sharing a special game link, enter a nickname that will identify you to other players. So as I was pre preparing for this, I had done this and I would typed in Scott Puzzle Solver as a nickname. So what I would do is, is create a game link by just clicking on that. And what that does is it brings up the option, to, it turns it into a link, and I can actually take that option and put it into an email and send it to like if you or and I were going to play and we knew that today was your day the day we we're going to do this I would send that email to you and I would say hey my, I'm going to be Scott Puzzle Solver so when you get that from your email from me then that's that's what you're going to get that's that's what you want to click on because that's our game so now this is taking a little while to actually bring that up so we don't need to do that but you may not even want to do that but I just want to get rid of that so hang on just a moment and I made that go away just by clicking the people again. Usually things like this are, don't be afraid to click twice. You click once to bring it up, click it again, and it toggles it, toggles on, toggles off. That's kind of all it is. So we are ready to play. So I'm just going to say, OK, click OK. So here we are. That little rectangle goes away, and I have all these pieces. And so how do we do this? Well, usually on things like this, you'll do a left click and drag. So I'm going to, like, on this puzzle piece here, I'm going to do a left click and just pull it down, and then I'll release, and it'll stay there. Same thing with this piece here. So I happen to know, if I recall, this is kind of a bottom piece because uh, the, the dark part of it was at the bottom. But these pieces are sideways, right? and this one even looks like it's probably upside down, right? So how do we change that? Well, you take your cursor, and, and with your mouse, there's usually a little dial on it. You just spin that mouse or, or move that dial just slightly, and there you go. It just moves it around. So we're going to do that, and probably that goes like that. So I'm going to slide over here. And how do these pieces go together? That's a good question. Well, it's actually not too hard. I'm going to take this piece, for example, and as I draw it closer to it, they're like that. See how that little icon says they go together? I just release. They click together. Boink, just like that. So I'm going to bring this one down, spin that around, and see if we can't bring that. That doesn't go together. See how that, I tried to, but it doesn't. I bet it goes over here. Sure enough, there it is, just like that. And probably this one here is this say edge piece. There it is. And I think that comes in here. We'll twist that around, bring him down. And that means that this one goes here as well. And this is a, probably a top piece because you got the, the, uh, the sky up at the top. Now one thing that will make this easier are these three little options up here. Now there's a picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like when I'm done. If I hover over that, if I just click on it, that will stay there and I can move that anywhere I want to and it will remain underneath the pieces. But I'm going to get rid of that so I'm going to just click it again and it toggles on and toggles off like I said. Now this square with the dotted lines, if I click on that, that gives me just the edge pieces and, and puts them uh, and in place where I can use them. So I'm just going to use the edge pieces only. And that'll, that'll make it a little bit faster for me. Now this is a sideways tree. So if I twist that, there we go. And I see these two little notches go together like that. That's kind of handy. I bet you that goes there. Show sure enough, it does. And that probably goes there like, like so. And let's see here. That's a corner piece. And that's probably a... I see this and that look like they go together. So if I twist that, let's see if they do. And, oh, close, but no, not quite. I bet you this one goes up there. Let's try that. There we go. Yeah, that works. And that means that this piece here probably goes in that little slot there. So I'm going to slide that down like so. And we'll bring this over. That's upside down, right? See, because you don't have the sky in the bottom. You have it at the top generally, unless you yourself are upside down, which we're not. So there's that little notch there. looks like a... I don't know, some sort of a vegetable, but they go together just like that. And that probably then goes here, just like so. And then this is upside down, so I'll twist that around and bring that in place and click. And guess what? 
all my edge pieces are done and the computer recognized that and said hey here's your middle pieces you need to use those so here's an upside down tree so I'm just going to move my little uh, dial on my mouse turn that around we'll put that in place where was that go there maybe no it doesn't go there how about over here no nope, not over there aha I'd say it goes right there because it just clicked in place right let's turn this around that looks like some sort of a tree-ish looking thing too so ah that's a pole so that is not a tree now here's an upside down piece we'll bring that in does that go there maybe yeah okay that's a complicated piece and one last one and there we are Boop, just like that yay now all the people give me a hand clap and I don't know if you can hear that but there's noise going on they're actually cheering me and then it gives you a little history of, of what that looks like now let's go to these these three lines here first modify this puzzle so if I say modify that brings that box up here again and allows me to change the number of pieces um, to let's say eight just for fun and now now we can use the hand we say okay I'm gonna do this with eight pieces I'll use this hand and what it does is when I click on the piece it disappears well where to go well if I bring put my cursor down here and click again there it reappears so it, it's just a disappearing just a disappearing act and that's kind of hard to put them together but the reason for that would be if you had one of those thousand piece puzzles I'm gonna to toggle that back off one of those thousand piece puzzles you would uh, use the hand to bring a piece from way over here in the middle now another thing on these three lines here just real quick before we close out is you can open photo as puzzle and this is just one of the neatest little tricks so here is a picture of these two older gentlemen I'm going to click on that and say open and what that does is it uses that very picture and breaks it into a puzzle and I'm going to change this to like six pieces just to have something to use and we're not going to rotate them we're going to leave it as is we're going to make that black at the back and okay so now we have six pieces of a, a puzzle that should be you would think be pretty easy to go together right let me see if I can get this ah that goes together that goes together I think right there I go yes and what's happening sometimes is like my uh, curse my my cursor is hanging on to the puzzle piece a little more than it should so I just double click left again there we go and that's that so you can change you can use uh, picture of yourself your vacation or whatever and turn it into a puzzle piece and it's just the neatest thing mute simply mutes the sound so like I said uh, when those people all jumped up and said yay and, and I don't know if you can hear me when I'm clicking these puzzle pieces together it gives a cute little click sound mute just mutes that so it's not distracting and then home page you go back to the home page and here you are again you can try a different puzzle and that is Jigsaw Explorer uh, which is a, a great uh, website to use for creating puzzles or, or putting puzzles together working puzzles and it's a super memory activity it really uses the neurons on our brain and keeps us young and sharp and and reasoning so all right join me again and in the next session we're going to talk about crosswords and then a couple of sessions beyond that so i look forward to meeting you there and good luck from scott at perry public library